My name is Dr. Moses Dixon. I'm the president and CEO for the Central Massachusetts Agency in Aging, also known as CMAA. CMAA has been the leader in providing information and resources to older adults and caregivers in the 61 cities and towns here in Central Massachusetts for 46 years. The Central Massachusetts, Central Massachusetts has well over 150,000 older adults this month in May is recognized as Older Americans Month, and this year's theme is Communities of Strength. Today, as we gather to highlight the importance of strength in our community and the urgency of collaboration to address the ongoing crisis of food insecurity. Several months ago, the YMCA of Central Massachusetts, led by Pam Supernot, who's the Associate Executive Director, the Yes We Care program led by Reverend Talley here at Belmont AME Zion Church and the Central Massachusetts Agency on Aging came together to address this, this uh, crisis with the help of Pastor Will Bullock from the Christian Jubilee Church with our initial discussion. The USDA, food, food to, the USDA Farm to Family Food Box program has been the focal point of this critical partnership. As the USDA food box program is set to expire at the end of this month, we must find new partners to continue this effort as the food insecurity crisis is a real issue in people's lives. People's lives like the grandparents raising grandkids or the lives of, uh, of the multi-generational households that have increased because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Central Massachusetts Agency on Aging is committed to continuing this partnership, and that's why we're here today to discuss uh, the food box program as well as next steps to continue this important effort. Um, I want to thank uh, Reverend Talley, uh, Pam, and certainly Jean from the Worcester County Food Bank uh, for, for collaborating with us. And so I would like to invite Reverend Talley uh, to say a few remarks. Thank you, Dr. Dixon. I would first like to thank Tom Slickland from Provision Ministries. Tom, you can just wave your hand. For his connection with the Food Box Distribution Program. Um, he is our initial contact to the Food Box Distributor, and he said he had a Food Box Distributor that wanted to look for hubs in Worcester, so that he asked if we would like to be a hub, and I said, for Yes We Care, absolutely, because this is our part of our health and wellness in what we do in service provided to the community. And so we've been distributing about 225 boxes per week to our families and, and partners. And we, to date, we've given out 4,910 boxes, almost 5,000 boxes since the time that we've started, which totals 73, 73 tons of food that, that's been distributed to the community. And also with our partnership with Provision Ministries, we've been able to provide community essentials, various products such as kitchen essentials, electronics, women hygiene products, masks, gloves, sanitizer, blankets, diapers, etc. And to date we've distributed over half a million dollars worth of products to the community. So why are we here? Because people and agencies care about what happens to our community. And it's been said that Worcester has a lot of resources but they don't talk with one another and they operate in silos. And together you're seeing the best of Worcester. You're seeing people and agencies talking with one another, coming together to affect the positive change, to make things better for the community. And as Dr. Dixon said, that we initially had a conversation to figure out what can we do to continue the program because we don't want to leave families wondering what are we going to do now. When the program ends, how are we going to supplement the food that we have been getting from this distribution program. And so both Pam and Moses said, we can't let it stop. We, we, we got to figure out something that we can do and also give a stipend for the workers that are working hard to administer the program. So they decided to provide some financial resources to make sure that the people that are volunteering get stipends also to ensure that this program continues, that it doesn't stop.
So it doesn't matter that it's going to end federally in May. We're, we've come together to make sure that the program keeps going. And so the good news is that also Tim Gavin, who could not make it today, said that he's interested in partnering with us as well to keep the program going. And he's going to be looking at different resources that we can use to make sure that this program continues indefinitely. And in talking to Congressman McGovern, he got me in contact with Caitlin, who is overseeing the food insecurity. She connected me with Jean from the Worcester County Food Bank. And she said that they would like to assist with the program um, by providing some resources and possibly some food that can be used to assist with the distribution. So as you can see, it's, it's a dynamic group of people coming together. And we're providing support and assistance to those who need it, those who can't help themselves. And I understand that there's going to be a launch this weekend for This is Worcester. But I would like to say, this right here, this is Worcester. This is the best of Worcester. And so what's next? With the help that we've come together and, and have decided to do, uh, we're going to enhance the program. So not only will we, we, we will be giving out food boxes, we're going to be giving out hot meals and looking at providing delivery service to those who just can't make it here. So we're look, going to enhance the program. We're going to continue it, not just continue, but enhance the program to make it better to provide more service and support to our community and our city at large for people who need it. So I'm excited that we've come together to make a difference. What you're seeing is synergy at its best. And look forward to great things coming from this program. I would now like to introduce Pam from the YMCA. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend Talley. Um, it's great to be here today. The YMCA of Central Massachusetts has been fighting food insecurity for decades. Um, the pandemic, there was a shift in access. It deepened and widened the gap between the families who could get food and the families who could not. The um, USDA Farmers to Family Food Box, which is really hard to say sometimes, um, program, we are so grateful for it um, and getting food into our communities. But I will tell you, everything is complicated. And this is where Yes, We Care came in, because getting the food boxes to Worcester and then in the hands of the families that need it is where the heroic and hard work comes in. So, um, you know, they mentioned a conversation. We were literally on a Zoom talking about something else. And it's like, well, what can you do? What can we do? And that's the way it all happens is let's figure out how to share resources, how to join forces and work together. Um, at the same time, the YMCA got a grant from YMCA of the USA in Chicago specifically for equity and diverse populations and food insecurity. This was spend the money in your towns on equity and access. So it seems like the perfect marriage. It fit beautifully together. Um, I will say that you know, I was going to mention Worcester and what a great collaborative we have here. This is a partnership that really matters to the YMCA. Food insecurity is important to us. We, we hope in our lifetime programs like this are not needed. But until, they are, until that time comes, we will be here standing shoulder to shoulder with all of the other organizations trying to make a difference and get food into families' homes. So thank you guys so much. Now I would like to invite uh, Jean McMurray from the Worcester County Food Bank to say a few words. And then followed by Jean will be our Congressman Jim McGovern. Thank you, Moses. Good morning. Um, as Moses said, I'm Jean McMurray, and it's a pleasure to be here to represent the Worcester County Food Bank at this gathering of people and organizations that have been helping their neighbors throughout Worcester with the basic necessity of food under very challenging circumstances during the pandemic. I'm also here today to pledge the Food Bank's support for this group's ongoing efforts. Being in the company of Congressman McGovern is always an honor, and the Food Bank is proud to be a partner with him and a resource for him, as it is for all of you. 
We are grateful to the Congressman for his remarkable leadership, his enduring commitment to creating a country where everyone is hunger-free and healthy, and for challenging all of us, from all of us here, from local organizations, all the way up to federal agencies. To, he's challenging us to actually solve the problem of hunger rather than just manage it. I also want to recognize and applaud Reverend Talley and his team of volunteers and partners for their dedication to making fresh fruits and vegetables available to the community through the USDA Farmers to Families Food Box Program. And because this specific piece of the program is ending in May, Reverend Talley and I are in the process of identifying and looking at what resources are available so that people continue to receive the help they need with as little disruption as possible. So one of the very first things, and I think one of the most important things that we can do, is provide people with good information on where food is available year-round. As you probably all know, the Worcester County Food Bank distributes fresh, frozen and non-perishable food to a network of 115 partner agencies throughout Worcester County, including two dozen food pantries right here in the city of Worcester. Since the pandemic, the food bank and our network have distributed enough food for 6.4 million meals to 106,000 people. So between now and the end of May, our flyer, Finding Food Near You, that's in both Spanish and English, is going to be distributed alongside with the fresh produce boxes. The flyer also lists the phone number for Project Bread's Food Source Hotline, a very valuable resource that helps people apply for SNAP benefits right over the phone in 180 different languages. SNAP benefits are used at grocery stores and farmers markets, like the one just across the way here at Crystal Park that's managed by the Regional Environmental Council, in addition to their mobile markets that travels into at least, I think, eight neighborhoods in Worcester. And when individuals and families receive SNAP, they are automatically enrolled in the healthy incentive program known as HIP. HIP is another great resource that helps people buy more locally grown fresh fruits and vegetables at farmers markets and mobile markets. It also puts a dollar back onto the person's SNAP EBT card for every dollar that they spend on fresh produce up to a certain monthly limit. So it's easy to see how important and valuable SNAP and HIP are and together what a winning combination they are of resources for local families, local farmers, and local economies. And yet, these resources are underutilized in Massachusetts. So all of us here today and others have to do our part to continue to support greater awareness of SNAP and HIP and also look for ways to help more people get enrolled in the SNAP program. So thank you again for inviting me to participate today and for the opportunity for Worcester County Food Bank to be of service. Thank you. Well, first of all, let me, um, let me thank uh, my friend Moses, Dr. Moses Dixon um, uh, and uh, Pam and Gene, and uh, let me thank Reverend Talley for his incredible leadership in this community. Um, and I'm honored to be here with all of them today. Reverend Talley said, this, this is Worcester. This represents the best of Worcester. He's right. Uh, you know, I, th this is what communities are supposed to do during difficult times, come together. Uh, and make sure that nobody falls through the cracks. Uh, and that's exactly what has been happening uh, out of this church. And I really, uh, I really want to commend everybody, Reverend Talley, all those who have worked here and volunteered here to help get uh, the food to uh, people in our community. Um, th the fact of the matter is uh, we have a hunger problem uh, in, the, in the United States of America. As we gather here today, there's close to 45 million Americans who don't know where the next meal is going to come from. They're hungry. This is happening in the richest country in the history of the world. We all should be ashamed of that fact. Food, is, food ought to be viewed as a fundamental 
human right for everybody. Uh, nobody should have to worry about whether they could put food on the table for their kids or for their families. And, you know, I've, um, I, was, uh, I, I was in a supermarket yesterday and a woman came up to me and she said, I, I can't wait till we get back till this pandemic is over and we can get back to normal. And I said to her, um, I don't want to get back to normal. Uh, we need to do better than normal because the hunger problem that we're faced with uh, was here before the pandemic. It's gotten worse, but it was here before. Uh, and, um, and so, uh, you know, we need to, uh, as we come out of this, figure out how we can do better. Uh, the pandemic has highlighted the great disparities and the inequities in our country. Uh, and those disparities and inequities are greater, are disproportionately greater uh, in communities of color, amongst black and Latino families. Um, and so we have to address this and we have to uh, rise to the challenge. Uh, I have um, uh, called on President Biden uh, to, do a, uh, to uh, host a White House conference on food, nutrition and hunger. Uh, last week in the Rules Committee, which I chair, we began uh, the first of a series of hearings uh, that will happen in Washington and all throughout the country uh, to listen to people about what's working, what's not, what's complicated, what's not, how do we do better, are there out-of-the-box innovative approaches uh, that we should embrace that should be replicated everywhere uh, in this country. And we're going to hear from, you know, food bank heads and, and, and heads of hospitals and schools and, um, you know, uh, faith-based leaders, but we're, all, um, but we're also going to hear from people with lived experiences because they're the ones who are going to inform us uh, how, we, how we fix uh, a, the system in this country, uh, a system that allows so many people to go hungry. Uh, and so we will be, you know, we, 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 the goal here is to come up with a roadmap to end hunger, not to manage it, but to end it. We have lots of programs, SNAP. Uh, you know, we talked about the food box program. You know, we're essentially managing hunger. Um, we need to find a way to end it. Uh, you know, I, uh, I sit on the Agriculture Committee as well, and we had a debate about SNAP, and one of my colleagues said to me, well, the way uh, we deal with, with uh, the, way, the way we ought to respond uh, to the growing number of people on SNAP is just tell them to go and get a job. And I reminded him that the majority of people on SNAP are children, senior citizens, you know, people who, who, who are unable to work. And of those who can work um, and, um, and who are on SNAP now, the majority of them do work. But they earn so little they still qualify for the benefit. Gene will tell you, and Reverend Talley will tell you, Dr. Dixon will tell you, and Pam will tell you that, you know, the, the demand for food um, increases toward the end of the month when people's snap checks begin to run out. Um, so maybe work ought to pay. Maybe we can begin with that, right? Um, but there's so much we need to do. Uh, and the program that is happening here that Reverend Talley has been at the head of will continue. I mean, um, and we're going to figure out ways not only to make it continue, but to enhance it, as Reverend Talley said. We're going to make it better. Um, and this community is going to come together and have his back and have the backs of everybody in this community. Uh, we're going to make sure uh, that, uh, that there's no disruption uh, in, the, in the delivery of food to people uh, in need. Amen. And, um, and he mentioned Tim Garvin, who's the head of the United Way, and, and together Worcester. I've talked to him as well, and he's talked to you. He said, we're going to, we're, we're, they're going to step up to the plate. And Gene and, and the Y and... Moses are all stepping up to the plate. Let me, let me just say that uh, I greatly appreciate all the work that is being done here in Worcester uh, to help our neighbors put, put food on the table. Um, I think it's inspiring uh, to see so many partners coming together to help those struggling with hunger. Um, and as we look to the future, I hope partnerships like these can continue to supplement the federal investments in our anti-hunger uh, safety net. And. Um, and just the, the, the final thing, you know, we can solve this problem. 
I mean, there are some issues and some problems. I don't know. How, I, I don't even know where to begin to think about how you solve them. Food insecurity and hunger. This is this is this is not one of those issues where we, we don't know what the answer is. Uh, we need to connect the dots. Um, we need to invest in programs to help lift people up, um, and we need to have the political will to make this a priority. Hunger, when all is said and done, is a political condition because we get the money, we have the food, we have the infrastructure. You know, we know what we need to do. What has been lacking is the political will. And so the success of what is happening here, um, I hope will inspire all of us to rise to the occasion. And, uh, and I hope uh, that, uh, you know, when we gather a year from now, we'll be talking about a White House conference uh, on food, nutrition, and hunger in Washington, and everybody here will be there. Um, and we'll be talking about how, how we're a model for the rest of the country to follow. So uh, thank you, and uh, we, will, we will be wind at your back. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, I, I want to thank everybody for joining us today, and I certainly want to give a special thanks again to all of our uh, partners here, but particularly Rev. Talley and uh, the Yes We Care program and his, his church and the volunteers that have been doing a, an amazing job with making sure that food got to folks that needed it in various communities. So, Reverend Talley, I just want to thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. There's one thing I forgot to mention. I'd like to thank John Barber from um, First Community Church in Holden. They gave us a donation where we could give $25 gift cards to everybody who's picking up a box as well. Awesome.